Hi guys, welcome to another video. So this will be like the first video of my project. Currently right now, the only part of my project that I own is this PLC, this Siemens S7-1200 PLC. And what I've done is I've just connected it to a push button at its digital input, and I've got a fan at its digital output, and then I'm just gonna be switching that on and off. So if I push down the push button, it starts the fan. And as you can see over here, I've got my ladder logic here so that when I push the push button, it starts a coil, which is basically just to send an output. Turns on the relay, which you can hear clicking there, and that starts that fan. So I've got five programs here for you. I'll just quickly run through the five programs. So first program here is just take an input of a button and then turn on a fan. So let's jump to program number two which is to take the input of the button and then start a timer and then the fan. Although this works, this does work a little bit differently to how you might think. All right, so for the second program, if I turn on this button, it's gonna activate this timer. So what's gonna happen here, I'll just, just explain it to you first. I press this button, so my PLC receives a digital input and then it activates the fan and starts the timer for five seconds. So even if I release the button, the fan will run for five seconds. So I'm just gonna tap the button, press it once, and now the fan is running for five seconds. And if you can see here, that five second timer increments, and then it turns off. So the fan has stopped now, press the button again. So you can obviously see how that could be used in industry, you know, I don't know. You enter, enter a toilet, which, you know, triggers the light to turn on. Once the light turns on, it starts a timer and then runs the um, extractor fan in the toilet for five minutes and then that turns off. So instead of five seconds, you can make that five minutes. And all of that is done, all of that is done literally just with this one bit of, you just want literally one rung of ladder logic here, which if you don't know what ladder logic is, it's a programming language which most PLCs use basically. So next up for program three, what I've got is I've got that same button plus that same five second timer and the fan turning on. But I've got a count up block here, which is basically going to count to five. So if I press the button once, you can see there that, that button turns on there, but the fan's not turning on. If I press it again, you can see here nothing's happening. And you can see there's a number above there which says two, and that's counting. So currently at four, if I press it one more time, the fan will turn on for five seconds, run the fan for five, sorry, the time will turn on for five seconds, run that and keep that fan output active for five seconds and then turn off. And then here, nicely done, I've got that fan output. So when that fan turns on, it resets my counter. So now press it one more time, boom, fan turns on. And it turns off. I don't really want to use a toilet analogy, but you, you gets a bit gross. But what you could do is you could say, run the extractor fan for five minutes, only after five people have used the toilet instead of one. But yeah, I'd like to leave the toilet analogy. So three, four, five, fan kicks on. And then boom, turns off again. So to program four, what I've actually got here now the only difference, if you look, is that this here is changed. So this is called a normally open contact, which means that when I push that button, it closes and then it actives. This one counts the button as it's already pushed. And so when I'm pushing it, it's, re it's flip logic, reverse logic. So this is a normally closed contact. And so when I press this, it will open. All right, so I must admit that this is actually kind of a dumb program to write. I could have done this in a much better way. And in, actu in actuality, I will, but since I've got it on this sheet, I'll just stick to it for now, but I'll change it in a second. So if you look over here, you can see that that button is now already closed, even though I'm not pressing down the button. So if I press it now, you can see it turns off and then counts off again, turns off, counts off again, turns off, counts off again, turns off. And then now you've got the timer on. So it's the, the logic of the button is flipped, but let me just edit this program here quickly. So if I remove this counter from here and remove this timer, okay, boom. So I've deleted the time. So now I've just got that button. So I've just got the button and the fan. And so the button is normally closed. So if I just download this again now, I'm trying to keep these videos short because the longer the video, it takes longer to edit. So you can see there now, my program has loaded onto the PLC. 
and now the fans just running now because it's just detecting my button as being normally as a normally closed input now so when I press the button now the fan turns off and so you can see you know there are there's a lot of use cases for something like this whereby for example if I had a limit switch here and I had you know let's say I had a a press a, I don't know a, a, I don't know a forging press if you know what that is I don't know let's okay let's imagine this screw if I've got a drill in and then when it reaches I want it I'll have it doing screwing down something let's say I've got a screw in this and then it pulls it back up to go back up to the start when it hits this button here then the drill bit stops turning so now the button is pressed the limit switch at the top here is pressed at the top and now that the machine turns off the spinning screwdriver turns off then once it comes back down again and you release the button then it starts spinning again don't know if that's a good example apologies it just came up with that off the fly so i could have probably done a better one but yeah that's how that works you can see there when i haven't pressed it it's closed or it's on and then when i press it down the fan turns off so it's just reverse flip logic all right and then the last type of program i have for you just basically the same as what we just had there but what i've done now is i've put like a clock bit in here which is basically it's using some internal memory and it's got you can have um like a one hertz clock or a half hertz clock or a two hertz clock so here i've got a half hertz clock which is just flicking on and off right just on off on off on for one second off for one second on for one second so my button right now because it's normally closed I've got my finger pressed down on it, so it's not active, so the fan won't turn on. Once I release the button now, then that fan is going to turn on and off for one second at a time, pulsing. And so, not really ideal because this particular CPU is a relay output, so you wouldn't really pulse with relays, like you're going to hear it clicking a bunch. But anyways, do you see how this works? So I release it. And so you can see here my button is on and then the clock is turning on and off for one second and then that means the fan is turning on and off one second at a time and yeah those are my five programs so let's quickly jump into what my actual project is going to be using this thing all right so let's turn this whole thing off so currently i've got my plc the s7 1200 being powered by my desk power supply which power supply which isn't ideal i mean it gives you 24 volts but really you want to have like a power supply module of this which you can get but it just needs 24 volts now my wiring of this whole thing is absolutely terrible and wiring this in and of itself is a skill like my company pays people to wire the panels for them and they do a very good job um so let's i suppose before i touch on my project i just want to because i haven't really done i mean i did do a video on my new job but I just want to quickly touch on what exactly is control engineering and what a PLC is. So in terms of control engineering, it's, you could say like a discipline of engineering. I suppose that's the, probably the right terminology. A discipline a discipline of en of engineering where you're using control theory. So you can get quite technical uh, in terms of like state machines and however you want to control something. So it uses control theory to build or to design and build mechanical and electrical systems. So my company does things like bridges and presses, forging presses, but that includes, you know, airplanes, you know, airplanes have a control system, especially when you're using autopilot. Escalators have a control system, supermarkets in terms of they have all those robots packing and picking, packing uh, things, Amazon warehouses, those are all control systems. There's gonna be, if you go into any one of these control systems, you're gonna see one of these PLCs in there. So if you think about like, for example, in a Tesla factory where they have like those each, like they have a car in the middle being built and they have the robots on each side, each one of those robots has a PLC in there. Generally speaking, these things, they're like computers, but super rugged and super simple. Their simplicity means that they're actually super safe as well. So because they're rugged, they can go in any sort of harsh environment. So, you know, a lot of these things can survive next to salt water and whatnot. Um, they can survive like some of the plants, you know, we've got like oil spilling everywhere and these things they survive they, they, they work down in low temperatures whereby, you know, our laptops or whatever computers would break So they're super rugged but at the same time they're super simple which means that, you know, as you saw here the code for it is super simple And so they're very popular in because of their safety and simplicity And so yeah, my job is to basically program this thing and 
get this thing to do complicated tasks like lift a bridge up and down or like lift a large bit of metal and smash it down into another large bit of metal to forge some stuff <laughs> uh, and then have like some crazy robot manipulators come and grab large bits of uh, forged metal and pull them yeah it gets it gets crazy so that's my job and in terms of this thing itself this is the Siemens S7 1200 so you obviously know Siemens in terms of like the mobile phone company they're actually like one of the most popular brands in the world and in terms of the UK these PLCs Siemens ones are very very popular but if you was in America you'd probably use like Rockwell Alan Bradley so I do actually have a printout of some of the PLC manufacturers so you got Siemens, Omron, Mitsubishi, Toshiba, uh, Honeywell, Panasonic, Hitachi, Schneider Electronics, Toshiba obviously Delta, Adam Bradley so some of these you may recognize some not basically the way that I kind of see these things is that these machines are controlling you know like for example my company has a has a forging press which makes helicopter blades and so those helicopter blades each one of them is like 400 grand right so if you think about one of these controlling a machine that's making that this thing better be bloody reliable because if halfway through making it it crashes and that part gets wasted <laughs> you just cost the company 400 grand so especially like so like one of the the machines that my company's done the machine itself it makes a million pounds a day for the company and so if this thing fails that business is losing a million pounds a day so these things need to be super super rugged and so the way that i see it is you need big companies to be able to develop these to make sure that these are super good so hence you have a lot of you know bosch and whatnot large companies making these so in terms of this specific model which is the s7 1200 i, I went with it because it was cheap 150 pounds here in the uk siemens are going to are the most popular brand for plcs and my company pretty much they do use some Alan Bradley stuff but almost specifically they, they use Siemens so I figured it makes sense in terms of my for me to get good at this to use Siemens even though I could have got potentially cheaper and better PLC so but so in terms of this PLC specifically what you have on it so it will tell you for example I'll bring you closer it'll tell you here that you got a, it's, this is so this is that the CPU unit so you got a PL, programmable programmable logic controller and this CPU here is a 1211 12, 12, C. I said 1212 12 because in university I used the 1212. And it's DC DC relay. So that means that DC, its input is DC. So it takes 24 volts in here. And then its output, I believe that's output is DC. And it's relay triggered. So it's got relays clicking on and off, which you can hear. And so if you want, we can actually have a bit of a look inside. If I can get this open. Where's that, where that screw down where I had? There we go. It's an ESD sensitive. But you can see there's a chip under there. If you have a look in there. Like it's quite open considering it's um see there's a bunch of capacitors in there. Yeah, this is the big chunky CPU unit. And then what you do with this, so this has um you can see here it's got twenty-four volts, so inputs, so it takes inputs. It's got 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this has got six DC inputs here. Uh, and then does it have any more? Okay, then it's got two analog inputs. So this here, I can put in two analog inputs, six digital inputs, and then it can put out, I believe, four. Yeah, four digital outputs. So this machine here, although it's a CPU, it, can also, it also acts as a bit of an I.O. module, an input-output module. But what you do with this is you actually attach modules to the right of it and to the left of it as well. So it's got these uh, connections here. So what you do is you can attach communication modules onto the left here, um, like for attaching like screens and whatnot. And then also onto the right here. Wait, what? Somehow on the right. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay. Well, as far as I know, you can add... Uh, modules onto the right here. I'm not sure. You must have to wire them in somewhere. I thought they connected into the base here, but I've got a picture of it here. I'll show you. So there you can see. So this is the CPU module, and you've got communication modules on the left, and that's the power supply unit, 
and then on the right of it you add input and output modules so where we only have for example two analog inputs then you could expand that you know by adding another eight right and same with digital as well so that's how you would have a bigger system the thing is each one of these i'm going i'm intending on buying all of these but each one of these costs a lot of money so this the digital input and output module is like 150 quid analog as well as like 150 200 quid this communication module is like 100 quid or 80 quid power supply module is probably the cheapest like 40 50 quid so you put all of that onto like a mountain rail and then you'd put that inside a control cabinet so yeah Siemens S7-1200. I think I've given you a fairly decent introduction. In terms of what's next, so the purpose of this video was to introduce you to my PLC project, which I'm not exactly sure what I want to do yet, but I think, so I've got this lovely aloe vera plant on my desk and I water it like often. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that um, dehumidifier I've got and get it to pump water into this using this PLC. So I think that's my plan. That sounds like a fairly cool project. And then I can add a whole bunch of bells and whistles on it to get it to email me and whatnot. So yeah, what I mean, what I really want to do is I want to include valves, pumps and motors. So I'd like to come up with a project that includes all of those because that's what I use at work. Uh, something that involves pipes, water, maybe a bit of oil. Yeah, that's what I think I'm looking forward to. So. I mean, the control logic for this seems quite simple. All you got to do is have a tank. Let me go. Let me get the tank. So this is my uh, dehumidifier water tank, which you can see is a bit dusty. So that water in there fills up. And then what I normally do is I normally tip it into the plant myself. So what would be cool is to put uh, some sort of fluid sensor, either if I use a laser, use an actual switch, whatever, in there. And then have it so that when that water rises to the top there, it triggers a switch which triggers an input on here and then that then uses the output to turn on to open a valve turn on a pump and then pump the water from here into the plant and then when it reaches the lower level switch maybe put a lower level switch and then it could stop or alternatively just have once that trigger here is uh, once that tri that full level is triggered then run a timer for five minutes and just pump the water out for five minutes yeah so that seems like the plan. Seems quite simple to me, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, so I haven't actually purchased anything. So if you have any ideas, let me know. All I've got right now is just this CPU. So over the next few months of getting paid, I'm going to buy a bunch of this stuff. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.